Marta, how lovely to see you again after all these years. And uh, I wonder if you could tell us something about what you've been doing since you left us. Sure. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And it's it's really great to see you as well. And um, so it's been a, quite a while since I, I graduated from King's um, and I immediately went into the sort of human rights and humanitarian sector. So I had various uh, placements in different NGOs uh, immediately after graduating. I started with an organization called the Euro Mediterranean Human Rights Network uh, that works uh, mainly ac across uh, North Africa and Middle Eastern countries with civil society organizations forming this big human rights network. So for, for that particular placement, that was in Brussels and I was with the EU Advocacy Office. Um, but later on, I um, spent some time in Lebanon um, and this was um, basically after a few years of working for different human rights organizations, including Girls Not Brides that works uh, on girls' rights, girls' education and uh, seeks alternatives to child marriage um, and other harmful practices. So after that, I took a very early, we can say, career break, even though I hadn't worked for very long. Um, and I did a second master's. Um, I applied for a, for a scholarship quite randomly um, at the European Inter-University Centre for Human Rights. I got the scholarship, so I just jumped on board. And my master's there was focused on human rights in the Middle East and North African region. While based in Lebanon, I conducted, I did a, my that master's thesis on um, Syrian uh, refugees, but more specifically, uh, Syrian-led efforts to rebuild, to uh, sort of self-empower. And so, yeah, Syrian-led efforts in Lebanon. So I conducted fieldwork along the Syrian-Lebanese border there. I think that was one of my highlights. Wow, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> Because um, I remember looking down on some of those borders from the Golan Heights way back when, and uh, it's a remarkably uh, atmospheric place, and I think you must have enjoyed working there. I'm particularly th thrilled that you're working in the field of human rights, because as you know, you know I've been teaching on, on ethics and human rights in world politics, and it's, it's hugely rewarding to find students going into this field. And what are you doing now? I mean, after that wonderful break, now that you've come back to your major career. Yeah, no, great. And also just to, to mention on that, that obviously your the modules that you taught at King's at the time of my master's there, they were really, um, they, they gave me a lot of inspiration and hope that it is possible to achieve yeah. change uh, because being able to conceptualize that and, you know, conceptualize the space for ethics in international politics is so important and quite rare or very rare. So your work really uh, laid a, an amazing kind of foundation for that work and also, yeah, made it seem possible yeah. to achieve change. So, oh, well, you can imagine how delighted I am to hear that. that <laughs> and your current position, what are you doing now? Five years ago, I um, incidentally founded an NGO, um, Refugee Rights Europe. Um, I say incidentally, it, it was an incident because it was supposed to just be a one-off project. So basically in reaction to the situation at the UK-France border in Calais and the surrounding area, um, I reached out to existing NGOs to see if there was any way I could be useful to advocacy efforts around human rights for displaced people trapped in that border zone. At the time, there wasn't really any appetite for that sort of work uh, in existing groups. So I mobilized my own network that I had built up over the years. You know, I had a big network of human rights activists, researchers and so on. And we set out to conduct a large scale research study in Calais. So we recruited uh, student researchers, trained them in field work uh, and, and deployed them to Calais. And we interviewed and surveyed nearly 900 camp residents in Calais at the time. And the, the overarching objective of that was of course, to conduct advocacy. So we went to find out exactly what's going on and to collect evidence of you know, the shortcomings in, uh, in the state response. Um, and then we published a report, had quite a lot of media coverage around it. 
and conducted parliamentary advocacy um, and yeah, in, in different forms. And today it's a relatively uh, established human rights NGO uh, advocating for the human rights of all individuals on European territory, irrespective of legal status, really. Now that is a, is a story to inspire future generations of students. But anyway, listen, I, I want to wish you everything of the best and congratulate you once again on an absolutely well-deserved award. I can't think of a, of a better recipient. So congratulations. And, and I do look forward to speaking to you again soon, I hope. Thanks so ever so much. It, it means a lot to hear those words from you. Really great to, to catch up. Thank you.